They are the most productive offensive team in NFL history. And for the third year in a row, this scoring strength has put the San Diego Chargers into the divisional playoffs. Head coach Don Coriel is the past-minded wizard who has led this team, and today he squares off against coaching legend Don Shula and the Miami Dolphins. Nobody thought Shula could do it, but somehow he guided a very young Dolphin team to the AFC Eastern crown. Miami got to postseason on the strength of its defense, and their offense, while not in San Diego's class, has been more than good enough, thanks in part to the efforts of players like wide receiver Duriel Harris. Harris is one of the veterans of a very young receiving core, comprised mostly of players known well only in Miami. Better known, but still maturing, is second-year quarterback David Woodley. Woodley has enjoyed some great moments during the season, but when he faltered, Shula wasn't reluctant to go to the bench and bring in veteran signal caller Don Strzok. On more than one occasion in 1981, Strzok has stepped in at critical moments, turned matters around, and has gotten the hot hand to get the offense in gear. The Dolphins know their opponent's offense is always in high gear. The Chargers can do just about anything when they have the ball. They can hurt you on the ground with the AFC's second leading rusher, the man who also tied an NFL record with 19 rushing touchdowns, Chuck Muncie. In the air, San Diego looks to a brilliant set of receivers led by tight end Kellen Winslow. For the second consecutive season, Winslow led the league in pass receptions. So the stage is set from the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida. It's the Western Division champions, San Diego Chargers, against the Eastern Division winners, the Miami Dolphins. The divisional playoffs on the NFL Game of the Week. In the stretch drive to the playoffs, Miami's defense was its strong suit, and it would have to be at its best against the Chargers' talented attack. San Diego tried to establish the run on its first series by going to Chuck Muncie, number 46. But the Dolphins' defense was determined to prove it was as tough in the playoffs as it was in the regular season. Chargers saw that running the ball was not in their best interest, they charted a flight in the friendly skies of Air Coriel. Number 89, Wes Chandler, hauled in a 47-yarder to set the stage for the game's first points, a field goal from kicker Rolf Benershka. Nershka would play a critical role in the game later on. But for now, the men of the moment were the members of the San Diego defense. Often maligned as one of the most generous units in the league, they set out to disprove that reputation in the first quarter. And David Woodley would be their unwilling victim. Leroy Jones, number 68, sacked Woodley to stop Miami. And then the Dolphins fell prey to the first of three key mistakes that would eventually give San Diego a commanding lead. Chandler turned in his second big play within four minutes with a 56-yard punt return. It was the first time a Charger had returned a punt for a touchdown since 1977, and the first time the Dolphins had allowed such a score in six years. The irony of Chandler's run was this. 
The leading punt returner in the conference in 1981 is James Brooks, who was San Diego's deep back on the play. But the punt was short enough that Chandler, the up man, made the catch. He then made the most of his opportunity. Play stunned the overflow Orange Bowl crowd as the Chargers extended their lead to 10 to nothing. But things were just starting to get bad for Miami. On the very next play, the Dolphins special teams made a second costly error. For some unexplained reason, Miami acted as if the kickoff was a punt and did not pursue the ball. San Diego's Hank Bauer did, however, and the Chargers took over. Within minutes, Chuck Muncy swept right in, and the nightmare grew darker for the Dolphins. It was now 17 to nothing San Diego, but they weren't finished yet. A third key mistake was made by Woodley and the Dolphins barely a minute later. Number 27, veteran safety Glenn Edwards had the sixth playoff interception of his career, paving the way for another scoring situation. Charger quarterback Dan Fouts did not squander the opportunity. Rookie running back James Brooks went the final 10 yards for his first playoff touchdown, giving San Diego an astonishing 24 to nothing lead. And a minute and a half still remained in the first quarter. When Woodley was unable to move the team on its next series, Miami coach Don Shula decided to make a change. Riding into the rescue was backup quarterback Don Strzok, football's answer to Goose Gossage. But unlike his baseball counterpart, who comes in to put out fires, it is Strzok's intention to ignite the Dolphins. And that's just what he did. From the moment Strzok entered the game, Miami was a completely different team. Three Strzok completions set up Miami's first score of the game, a 34-yard field goal from Uva Von Schaman. It was still 24-3, but at least Miami had something, and they would get more after the defense forced an important turnover. Linebacker Kim Bocamper stripped Fouts of the ball. A nose tackle Bob Baumauer recovered the fumble. Then Strzok continued his magic, connecting on five straight passes to move the Dolphins close to a score. The capper was a one-yard flip to tight end Joe Rose, number 80. And suddenly it was San Diego 24, Dolphins 10. Strzok's heroics galvanized the whole team. The defense stopped the Chargers the rest of the half. And when the offense took over with seconds to go, they stunned the Chargers, the fans, and the millions watching on TV with one of the most incredible plays of the year. Time ran out in the first half as Tony Nathan galloped into the end zone. Taking a page out of the schoolyard playbook, the Dolphins had turned a short completion into a 40-yard touchdown, and suddenly it was 24 to 17.
Uriel Harris's lateral to Nathan was the single most important play of the half. The momentum had now switched completely over to the Dolphins. Once trailing by 24, they went to the locker room behind by only seven. The Chargers, predictably, were stunned. Only a short time before, it looked like this would be an easy win. But now they knew they were in a dogfight. What they didn't know, what no one knew, was that an even more incredible second half would make this one of the greatest games in playoff history. As the Dolphins returned to do battle, there was simply no way they could anticipate what was to transpire. No way they could comprehend what a truly classic contest they would be a part of. It would take four hours and four minutes, nearly 14 minutes of overtime, over 1,000 yards in total offense, and 10 touchdowns and three field goals to decide a winner. Many would later call it one of the greatest games in the history of the NFL. Bullpen ace Don Strock began the third quarter by combining with Duriel Harris to sweep the Dolphins downfield. A pair of remarkable catches by Harris focused Charger attention on Miami's wideouts. So Strock changed pace and called on his tight end, Joe Rose. Rose's second touchdown of the evening deadlocked the score at 24. Earlier, San Diego had pumped 24 first quarter bullets into Miami, and Dolphin fans were numbed and left virtually without hope. Now early in the second half, they were given new life, and a laugher had quickly become a thriller. But just when it looked like Air Coriel was going down in flames, Fouts reloaded. Ellen Winslow would finish with 13 catches for an amazing 166 yards, thrust San Diego back on top, 31 to 24. Bouts made it all possible with a convincing pump fake to the outside, which froze a pair of Dolphin defensive backs. Winslow snuck in underneath, and he was wide open. The Chargers have been compared to the knockout puncher with a glass jaw. They can score from anywhere, but they too can be scored upon from anywhere. True to form, their touchdown lead quickly vanished. Late in the third quarter, Superman Strock utilized a splendid mix of run and pass and orchestrated an 83-yard march downfield. Patience and hard work, the mark of a Shula team, were the ingredients. Strock was patient. And Tony Nathan, number 22, was the hard worker. Suddenly, with a first down from midfield, Strock knew he had lulled the Chargers into sleep with dump passes and short forays into the flat. So he sent Bruce Hardy, number 84, deep. Of Strzok's four touchdown passes, three were to tight ends, and the reason was simple. Both Rose and Hardy can get deep, and single coverage on anyone is exploitable. Hardy had only Woodrow Lowe, number 51, to beat, and the result was the longest pass reception by a tight end in Miami history, and it tied the game once more at 31. This had become far more than a football game. It had transcended mere blocking, passing, running, and tackling. It was a mini novel of climaxes, peaks and valleys, a human experience, an emotional event. 75 degree heat and humidity and the volatile nature of the game were beginning to take their toll. It was the Thrilla in Manila, the 1975 World Series, center court at Wimbledon, and Derby Day all rolled into one. 
Late in the third quarter, it was time for a Charger Valley and a Miami Peak. Lyle Blackwood intercepted and lateraled, and Gerald Small returned it to the Charger 15. And on the first play of the fourth quarter, Miami led for the first time in the game, 38 to 31. Who could have even imagined that trailing hopelessly 24 to nothing, Miami could fight back to lead by a touchdown in the fourth quarter. This game was a collage of big plays. And before it would end, 75,000 Orange Bowl fans could arguably say to each other, this was the greatest game I've ever seen. Ahead, the final chapter of a classic. Right at the end of the tunnel. At last, Miami could see it. But leading by seven with five minutes to play, that light became an oncoming train. Number 37, Andre Franklin fumbled, and Fouts drove his chargers on, whipping them down the stretch. Courageous catch by Wes Chandler placed the Chargers at the Dolphin 10. And with just over a minute remaining, Fouts proved why he was able to break his own NFL passing record for the second time in his career, and why he led the league in touchdown passes this season. He waved his magic wand one more time. Number 21, James Brooks, tied it yet again at 38. It was a broken play, and fortunately for San Diego, Kellen Winslow did not touch the ball or obstruct Brooks's view. Bout saw Brooks slip behind the coverage, but Winslow didn't know his teammate was behind him. Fifty-eight seconds remained, and in this game, fifty-eight seconds was an eternity. From forty-three yards out, Uva Von Schaman had a chance to win it for Miami with four seconds to play. Kellen Winslow tipped the ball, and this fantastic affair spilled into overtime. Sudden death. Many thought that at this point, Commissioner Pete Rozelle would take the field and distribute tickets to both teams for Super Bowl 16. After all that had transpired, certainly both teams deserved it. He at best could have given them purple hearts. In overtime, Fouts again added to his passing yardage that would eventually total 433 yards. Catches by Winslow and Joyner and determined runs by Muncie and James Brooks carried San Diego downfield. Rolf Benershka, perfect inside the 20 all year, poised himself to win it from the Miami 8. Unbelievably, the ball sailed wide to the left. And minutes later, Von Schaman had a shot. Again, Kellen Winslow blocked his attempt, and the saga continued. The fourth hour of play had come to an end, and still a king could not be crowned. One man had to rise up and take control of this game once and for all. Otherwise, fans would drop, coaches would shrivel up, and players would require hospital emergency rooms. One man did rise up, and that man was Dan Fouts.
Wes Chandler, one of three Charger pass catchers to go over 100 yards, caught a pair on the drive. And veteran Charlie Joyner made a big catch, good for 29 yards. Joyner's catch and sideline move got the Chargers down to the Dolphin 10. And finally, and mercifully, Anershka's kick was good. There was no emotion left. The game played on the evening of Saturday, January 2nd, 1982, was ready for the record books, and the athletes were ready for psychiatric assistance and intensive care. Miami's Cinderella season had come to an end. As San Diego had performed the impossible, they had defeated the Dolphins in their own home Orange Bowl. Surely there is no way that the Super Bowl in Pontiac can come close to being even a shadow of this classic contest. Arguably, this game may perhaps be the greatest game ever played. Certainly, it is the greatest game played in a long, long time. It had more scoring than any playoff game ever, and undeniably, more excitement. The expressions on the faces of the winner tells it all. Their reward, a date in freezing Cincinnati in the AFC Championship.